Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Mindful Warrior Podcast. We're here, I'm Evan Britton, here with Grant Matos. Did I say that last name right, Grant? You did, I'm yeah, sorry. absolutely. I'm sorry for the any confusion there might have been, but Grant Matos, uh, we're going to continue his story, we're going to hop right in, really excited to hear about his life after football finding his wallet at the Wynn Hotel. Nate, how you doing, my brother? I'm doing good. How are you, Eb? I'm feeling pretty great right now. Yeah. This is episode three of The Pain Project. We're starting to find our footing a little bit and figure out what we're doing here. To refresh everyone's memory at home, all three guys on the microphone, we all played in the NFL. Um, Me and Eben for six years, Grant for four. And we're here to tell our stories. And Grant, last week you told us a pretty remarkable story about your your path to the NFL, through the NFL, and out the butthole of the yeah, NFL. Yeah, that's a great way to describe it. <laughs> it, was, it was. It was like passed through, squeezed right. and all. You, and you, you went in as this like delicious piece of like food, and you came out a piece of shit. So innocent at the beginning, and so goal-driven and dreams, like childhood dreams, and then you come out just ripped up on the other side. Worn you come out, out ripped up. Worn out. Worn ripped out. up, worn out, and... Um, exhausted. Exhausted, and unsure and unclear why. Right. And we got into all that kind of gnarly stuff that you went through in the first episode. But this this one is about your resurrection and your finding of your own identity, mm-hmm. your finding of your path in yoga, your finding your true love, your mm-hmm. finding yourself, yep. your creative process. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's what we want to get into this time. Perfect. To see the light on the other side. Yeah, because there is light. There is yeah. light. So you were uh, so you were at the Wynn Hotel. You got out of Vegas and uh, you went back to L.A., to start this new chapter You're in your life. You're flying back to well, the wind. Well, flying back to the wind. So just a, a small recap, um, no sleep, um, no gas. <laughs> it's hiccuping, and the car's hiccuping into the parking lot, and go to the lost and found, which I didn't know there was, but apparently there is. I asked some somebody, and lady comes up like a savior with her wallet, my wallet in her hands, um, <laughs> and What's that sound, bro? What's that sound? <laughs> it's my struggling water damn opening. damn it. It was my water opening. <laughs> <laughs> um, and hands me a wallet. So now I have a way of actually my buddy Eugene to send some money to an account where I can fill up my tank because with gas. Because otherwise, in case someone didn't listen to the previous one, correct. Grant had just, after spending his uh, time in the NFL, had kind of uh, drifted into Las Vegas where he was dating a lady and she had two kids. He was moved in with them and then it kind of hit rock bottom. You lost all your money. You guys separated basically or broke up mm-hmm. and you were figuring out what the hell am I doing? You were on down to your last fumes. Yeah, down to your last fumes. Literally not able to pull myself out of a situation I got myself into. Luckily, a great friend, Eugene, um, had called me randomly that morning uh, when I found my wallet at the win and was like, I don't care where you are or what, what your situation is, you can stay with me in L.A. till we get you back on your feet. And that was enough of a glimmer of hope to to latch on to and be like, yes. And to and get you the fuck out of the to desert. To get me out of the desert. Because like we mentioned in the last episode, you, I had stayed in contact with a bunch while there and your your main theme was, get the fuck out of there. Are you in your car? Yes. Turn around. Drive out. Just get out, right? And I couldn't hear that. I didn't have the strength to get out. Well, I mean, you're, you're in your own life, and it's easy for people to give you advice from outside of it, but when you're inside of it... You can't you, see it. No, and you yeah. forged these relationships with people you cared about. True. And uh, you didn't want to just leave them. And you also felt lost, because yeah. when you leave the NFL, you're fucking lost. You Absolutely. didn't really know where to go, or who you are. Like being on a like out at sea in a tiny fucking boat without any oars or a sail. It's oh, a yeah. really weird, bis- I've used that cheesy metaphor. The it's time. the analogy, right? Like, it's but a good it's, one. it's it's it, you really are. And yeah. I mean, people listening, if you're just like, oh fuck off, like my more extreme know? version of that is you're on a cruise ship, okay, and everything's going well, and you're sleeping one night, yeah. and then the security busts into your room and drags you off the back and throws you <laughs> off the cruise ship in the middle of the night, and you watch the cruise ship going out like this. The oh, and it's going away. Oh, yeah. dude, and you're that's trying Water. Water. It's night. You got no fucking life jacket. And it's absolute fucking black out what there. Pitch black. Do? Sink or swim. And a shark comes and bumps your leg. <laughs> <laughs> well, you better have fucking. You better sink or swim. Yeah. So you decided to swim out of Las Vegas. Yep. Head back to LA and start your life new. Start it brand new, almost like being born. So not through the asshole, now through 
The vagina. The vagina. So tell us about that process of finding yourself anew. You had to kind of go through <laughs> your own isolation, right? True, yeah. So I get back. I roll into L.A. Uh, and right as I jump out, Eugene, he just let me embrace. He gives me a big hug. And um, before I, I don't, I, we don't do anything else, he says, "We're gonna let's go get you a job. And so literally from his place, we walk directly to Equinox West Hollywood. <laughs> um, <laughs> front front desk job. Pool right? boy. Pool boy, pool boy. And I'm, I'm now... Steam room towel attendant. <laughs> I got nothing. Uh, we walk, front desk, hey, do you need a job? Yes. Application, fill it out. So now I have uh, a possible job with money coming in. Positive life where I can work out here. I can, I can meet positive people. I can uh, eventually meet my wife, who is a member at this gym. Um. And from there, he takes me down the street, and we get a, I get a fucking haircut. Because I all the, <laughs> the whole time in Vegas, I, grow, I had no haircut, didn't shave, nothing. So I was, it was like a Whoa. castaway. Wow. <laughs> it really felt like that, too. You I was coming just, back to the You're like Sean Connery in The Sean. Rock. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> Oh, when they get him out of the yeah, prison? Yeah, she gets a haircut. He looks right. gnarly in that. Yeah, yeah he, he does. He it's really does. fucking dope. Yeah, yeah dude. So I had, I had appearance-wise given all two fucks about like looking a certain way, and I was tired of being judged on how I look anyway. And so I was like, I'm going to make you see past this long hair, scraggly beard. D- Charlie, I think, even came down to Vegas, our old teammate. And, was, and when I picked him up at the airport, he's like, you look like fucking Jesus. Charlie <laughs> Adams. Charlie Adams. Yeah. Another A4C member, folks. Another yeah. A4C member. A4C. Um, so got a haircut, came back and it was this process, this day in and day out. It was, it was a painful process of letting go of that life in Las Vegas, which was very easy to hide and very easy to, um, to feel sorry for myself and very easy to stay in that cycle of depression. Right. Um, but to face that every day now and to, um, actually be, and say, gain strength and say, I'm not going to live that way anymore. I'm going to start living for myself, not anybody else. And getting a job must have been a big step on that. Just it was to big. to give you something to do on a certain day from a certain Boom. time. Boom. And, and, and you know what? F- fuck it. It was minimum wage, whatever that was at the time. And it, it was really, really like just menial work. But whatever. I, like you said, I had a place to go. I had a healthy outlet now to take out all this anger. I could go push weight around, yeah. which was great. And it was in that job that you know one day after a, a shift, I look at the fitness schedule and I go, what the... It was it was a word I didn't know what it was at the time Y O G A and I was like <laughs> I didn't know you didn't what it know what the word was didn't know it I said wow. yoga what's yoga no you didn't really true friend you true didn't friend. know Seriously? while you were playing in the league that the that yoga was a thing I knew of it I just didn't know it was I didn't you know the name never, for it yeah. I never heard of it right you so thought, it was that foreign you That's thought it was foreign. the Jedi Master in Star Wars I didn't know I didn't even know that yoga oh. yeah right yoga. yoga I'm going to try yoga okay. dad. Dad, um, <laughs> so it's actually it's an, it's a somewhat rare transition to go from football player to yoga instructor, which is what you've done. You you are here in LA because you're teaching yoga all month. Yeah, you are a highly sought after Hollywood yoga instructor. I like how you say that, David. It's highly true. sought after. Beautiful. It's it's no, it's uh, yeah, it's true. That's true. Um, so that so that first yoga session, can you tell me about that? Yeah, tell us about. That. Well, I walked in and you know like like. I had shoes on and I didn't know the procedure, right? Of like, we, you go in, no shoes. Um, it's done barefoot. And I thought, I walked right into the middle of the room and I'm standing in my, you know, shoes and the teacher comes up and she's like, you got to take your shoes off. <laughs> you can take your shoes off, please. And so- like, Why are you whispering? Yeah, I said that. I said, why are you whispering? Yeah. I'm all loud, right? And just this- was, What are you talking <laughs> about? Yeah, exactly. Where do I put it here? <laughs> Fuck you. Um, so I take my shoes off. I come back inside. And, I, you know, I, I'm really thankful that the first teacher I had was an excellent teacher. A lot of people have poor experiences their first time around. Like, they, they don't vibe yeah, with the teacher. You a good teacher. Right? Like, if you don't have a good coach, you're not going to... Have to. You, you know what I mean? So yeah. there was that. She was great. And uh, length, the, the, what, yoga is 60, 75, 90 minutes of you're not talking. Mm. You're listening and you're moving through poses. So you have that time where your brain, um, if the teacher is good, it will give you space to process sh- shit that comes up, whether that's um, memories from past, uh, stuff you're working through currently. Um, but is that is sure. that happening subconsciously because you're following the instructions? Well, of it's a meditation. Both. It's subconsciously and consciously. Yeah. Stuff is going to push through to the surface and it's going to pop up in yeah. a class, whether you want it to or not, whether it's something you're dealing with today 
or some shitty thing somebody said to you, a uh, coach said to you like 15 years ago. It's amazing. It pops up in the randomest things. And you can either do one of two things, much like physically leaving Las Vegas. You can either stay and um, and or push it away and let it control you still, or you can let it come up, observe it, and just watch it pass. Because all this stuff that comes up, is, it eventually passes, right? Mm-hmm. As long as you look at it and see it uh, or feel it, whatever whatever it is. But is there a word for that, like a yoga word for like any of the kind of it's memories? There probably is, but see, here's the thing: I the with the Sanskrit, like it's a okay. The yoga practice for me, it's 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 beautiful. It changed my life. Um, but, the creation of it is in India, in the East, and probably in right. other places. But it's popular, pop, popularly popular. It's what am I trying to say here? It's known around the world um, yeah. that. Okay, this was a practice that started in India, right? Um, mm-hmm. And it's five thousand plus years old. We don't really know that. We don't really know that it's five. There's nothing there's not in text. History, or... No, it's all oral, right? Or not all, but most of it's oral. So there's no hard facts like this practices. The 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 oh. the hard and fact rule is that we have somebody five thousand years ago that started writing about it. Mm-hmm. So who knows how far back it went? But and then there's all these things that work for the for the yeah. for the Eastern cultures, which is beautiful. But when you're trying to um, package that for a Western, for a modern... Los Angeles-based city, right. some of the things are going to hit, and a lot do. Some of them are not, right? So for me, it's the Sanskrit, beautiful language, like super old, one of the oldest yeah. languages, right, in the world, ancient, yeah. ancient, right? Beautiful. Um, to beautiful use to it, the ear, beautiful to the ear, beautiful just in the fact that it's old, how much history it has. Um, never really resonated as far as using it in a class, right? Yeah. For me, and right. and some people frown because upon it that. It probably goes over people's heads, and they don't listen to it. Right. So it comes back to, I'm born and raised in L.A., right? Um, I don't know what you're saying when you say these um, words in another <laughs> right. language to me, right? Can you tell me in my language? Yeah. And that's fine. You can also explain them to it what it means. But if it again, it's authenticity. If you're teaching from a place that's not authentic, nobody's going to want to listen to you or come to you right to, yeah. to 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 go through a practice agreed so did you have a struggle going from the football world which is very physical um to this yoga world which is very supple and absolutely expressing using different words and different terms mm-hmm. and maybe you didn't really believe in all the th- well i'm, I don't, I'm not going to put words in your mouth but how do you kind of straddle both sides with it and mm-hmm. has it presented any problems uh i think how i how i straddled it was i um I took in all that. I didn't realize that it wasn't something for me until after maybe like a year or two of practicing. I'm like, uh, the Sanskrit, part the of Sanskrit it. part of it, and uh, and then and then just making the practice mine because that's the beautiful thing is, over time the practice becomes yours and you can take it, take what what works for you. You can leave out what doesn't. Um, so true. And so true, right? And it's like that with anything in life. So um, I, I just eventually over time it just became what works for me. I do, um, and as far as the you know, the from the football aspect of it, going from such a intense, I steered away from the classes that were super intense because you have like these cross CrossFit type classes of yoga mm-hmm. where it's very like loud music and <laughs> we're moving yeah. right foot forward blah, 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 and arms up and and then there's all this constant movement. It's really aggressive. Yeah. So I steer. I found my path steering away from that and more restorative, completely opposite swing from football where it's I'm actually gonna take care of my body now versus tear it down that's, I think that's great yeah great you know uh, do you is it a specific method you know i i grew up it's you know it's really funny there was a time when i was a teenager and in, in my wander lust years i was like yeah i might just be a fucking yoga instructor when i grow up because my mom from the age of 13 was dragging my brother and i to yoga classes that's amazing you know and you know, at that age, I loved it because it was getting into a room with, you know, tons of girls and, you know, they're all like doing <laughs> yeah. these poses. And, and at this age, that's disgusting. I agree. Yeah, yeah. But at 13, yeah. that is super attractive. I mean, you know, no, but I mean, I was a kid and I was just in paradise, you know, and then I'm doing this thing. It's physical. It's a, it's, I'm getting into this meditation. I had no idea about it. Right. Um, it obviously was a huge asset to my football career. 
and giving yep. my body is that true though what that, was that like yeah that being good at yoga makes you a more capable i think it player? makes your body more durable does it make you more elongated and less snap back crack it no knock, knock. no no i, I didn't so. you didn't think okay you th- interesting what do, what do you think well I, you're uh, with all due respect you're an offensive lineman who doesn't really rely on the quick bursts but I rely on flexibility and bo- and being able to contort and move my right. body. Right, so I suppose for certain positions it's probably really good. And balance and being able to sustain against a force and right, being able right. to control the force while I'm moving. It's very Qigong you know, too. Very very much of st- yoga is like posture maintenance, maintaining posture and being able to hold those positions for long periods of time. There's a lot of the yoga that we did. And yeah. that. Ultimately, sorry, go ahead. No, no, but anyway... You know, I and then I got away from it when I started getting hurt in football, and I had this feeling of I'm too fucking big, um, I mean it hurts too fucking much to sit here and do these yoga poses. So I really got right. away from it, which I thought was a huge mistake looking back at my career, because I found myself now in my life after football. I'm fucking waking up in the morning and I'm doing like sun salutations and getting into down dog and just fe- and getting my hamstrings and my calves and my feet warmed up. Yeah. And it's really acting as like a, a early morning meditation for me as well. Absolutely. You know, so it's so, I mean, you know, anyway, I just wanted to, my mom is going to get her master's actually in yoga at Loyola Marymount. Oh yeah. They do a program there. They have this program there. And I know there's, you know, on you, Sarah. Mm-hmm. Um, what's the hot one? Bikram. And, Bikram, right? Yeah. Um, by the way, uh, created by a creep, right? Ab- no, absolutely, know. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. By all absolutely, yeah, right. for sure. Right. No um, doubt. Which, which shows? I'm sorry. You go. Go. No, keep, no, no. Keep no, on no. going. I didn't want to jump. But uh, so I guess my my question, circling back to my question for you, was, you know, is your method kind of an amalgamation of all these different styles, and you've created your own? Because I think that's really cool too. And as an athlete, you know. We're such intuitive guys with our, as far as our bodies and how they function. Absolutely. So I'm sure you could bring a lot extra to it to I was, somebody's practice. Yeah, I was lucky in the fact that I had a teacher who who t- taught me um, based on his various his 20 plus years of study in all areas of yoga, right? All practices, all different kinds, and so I had a really well rounded first training, which now seven years later, ha- and you know over. 15,000 hours or 20,000 hours of, of teaching under my belt um, has, I'm in a really unique position as far How as How many like, hours? At least 20,000. That's at a least. fucking shit. It's a lot of yoga, right? Yeah. And so that I'm, right now I'm a little burned out currently from teaching, but yeah. like, and up and I'm down. <laughs> Somebody shoot me in the dick. And then hang right? So but that's a whole other story. Um, <laughs> But, uh, and so now I have an offering of that's really unique in that um, it's not uh, any one style. It's um, very, You're able to cater it to whoever you're teaching? Whoever. That's whoever, cool. right? That's Which awesome. is great. When I think a lot of yoga teachers would also ad- admit, but I don't know if they have the background of really physically taking their body to a, a, a massively extreme place yeah. like we all have experience, right? Yeah. Um, uh, we had, I don't know if you were there in Denver when we had that dude Yoga Dan. You know? Yoga Dan, I, f- I feel like... Uh, so we had a guy, a yoga guy, who came and did yoga with us. I think it was the last year I was there or maybe the year before. Yeah, that. I wasn't he there. He wore a cowboy hat. No. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I mean, no. But but I felt Wait, that... Yoga Dan was a cowboy too? A black cowboy, yeah. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but he was a super cool guy and, and the coach liked him and so he'd come and give us yoga instruction. Kind of cool down stuff and like uh, training camp stuff and he was there on game day go- leading this little... Uh, yoga, whatever um, wow. thing, and I always felt that it made it worse for me. It always it, like it didn't help me because I was like uh. already a certain way from football, right? And I had to mm. be that way forward, yeah. balled up. Damn right. And I was always hurting. Yeah. But when I would push my body out of it and try to align it right, mm. it would be so cutting through the gunk and stuff that I would be just more fucked up, and right. then it would like come back harder, worse the next time. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I always felt that there was a. Like yoga is a is a great thing, but it was so butting heads with the whole football philosophy that it was like it didn't seem very well kind of dovetailing. No, it, no doubt. And my first experience actually with the practice was in Tennessee, and they brought in this world f- famous teacher. Um, and at the time, she was we had Vince Young had just been drafted, and so she literally was just all over Vince the entire time. 
And like you said, all the poses we were getting into, I knew my body well enough, just much like you did, right, to know, like, if I do this, my lower back is going out. Yeah. And I don't care what you say, this isn't fun. Yeah. And this is not relaxing. Yeah. You know yeah, what no, I mean? And like, no. fuck off. I don't want to be here. I'd rather be at home resting if or doing something. this is making me angrier. It's, it was. And increasing my pain. It's <laughs> right. not increasing, a good thing. It's not a good thing, yeah. right? And power lifting along with yoga isn't really good. Right. Right. So, yeah. When we, like, I've seen that the result, CrossFit people would, will come into the hot studio and stuff. And you just see, like, and I look at them and I go, God, I used to be like, just like that. Like, totally just re- very stiff and functionality movement wise well i was all right with that but yeah it, it you, didn't work what it do you didn't feel work. about the crossfit world and what does the yoga world think of the crossfit world uh me personally the crossfit all these worlds all these worlds colliding. <laughs> the yoga there world was such a strong kickback for Chris the crossfit, Fox. crossfit right it's <laughs> Because for guys like us who have pushed like ourselves very 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 intensely we don't need to go back to that world. No. Give me fucking 20 power cleans and then fucking 100 pull-ups. And if you can't do it, ah, fuck you. <laughs> I did one CrossFit class and I looked at the teacher and I just put my middle finger up and right, I said, fuck you, dude. <laughs> you have no, it's like, hold the bar right. You're not holding the bar right. I'm like, I've done hours lots of, this. Uh, lots yeah. of this i know what's safe of this i'm shit. crossfit certified man yeah it was that kind of mentality and so you you can imagine i'm sure i don't know if you guys have done it before but it's just it's Cultish. not i did it one time it too is. and i and i had that surge of adrenaline like i was like competing yeah and then i fucking had a good workout i guess and then the next day my wrist was all fucked up my lower back <laughs> from doing all these cl- cleans You're doing and, like, 900 fucking like, cleans yeah, yeah. yeah. right for, so, so, for someone who has old injury problems crossfit's not good right so it's so we're talking though from a level that we've experienced um, already, right? Few people get to experience what we have. And I'm not saying that to impress anybody. I'm saying it to more impress upon them. They, they, you're, they're getting their experience, they, right? right? That, that intense, right. like that's my, right. that's my game day. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? That's my, so I don't so know. So I guess the delicate thing for us as former uh, NFL players is to use that in a way that is it able to be integrated into a new field, whether it's yoga, whether it's writing, right. whether it's some some art, yeah. whether it's anything, yeah. in a way that doesn't make people uncomfortable, allows people to work with you, and you articulate it effectively enough to make people understand it. Absolutely, you know that's the hard part is finding words. Super hard. Yeah, but what you've been able to do is is probably your writing and your creative side has helped your yoga communication probably a lot. Huge. Can you talk a little bit about your writing and your creative kind of exploration? You're a musician as well. You're a musician. <laughs> Aren't you? Well, yeah, writing writing for me started as music. I love R&B and soul music, like as Nate knows. Right. Um, real smooth. I like I'm always like, like, and I would listen to it baby. before games. Yeah, actually, I would actually listen to that before taking the field. No <laughs> shit. Who are um, some of your faves? Uh, favorite artists would be, you know, Carl Thomas, Joe, um, uh, 112, um, 112. John B. Where the players dwell. Um, where the players <laughs> That's right. <laughs> like a handful of these guys, Boys right? Have you listened no. to like Teddy Pendergrass? Teddy Pendergrass, all those old oh. school guys. Yeah. Sam Cooke. Mo- yeah, Sam yeah, Cooke is my all time favorite. <laughs> Sam <laughs> Cooke. Hey, you, that was good. Nice, nice. <laughs> Yeah, Evan, dude. Whoa, where, who? Who? Oh, falsetto, that was man, you're yeah. falsetto. Yeah, and if you didn't it's know, in, in, Nate himself too has some vocals that will crush. T Rex T- oh, T- vocals, I, used to call I, I got to hear a little sample on that. On, on that, that song, oh, dude, yeah, so they've been a fan. You, yeah. Nate actually inspired great. me to actually. It was in Denver that I started actually writing uh, so music because he was he was already well on his way to you know writing and singing and, and rapping. Uh, and so I started writing in Denver music, right? And then years later, it turned into actually getting beats to actually sing over to. And uh, it was it was a great release. Right. Um, and then the actual writing prose, that was um, something that blew everything apart as far as my mentality around um, the journey itself, the, the NFL journey itself and life after. I was able to therapeutically... Um, Underst- purge yourself. Underst- purge myself. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no Take joke. Take that shit. Take that shit. But but what most people don't understand is how alone, lonely that world is. The writing, you know, world. yeah, the writing yeah. world. You're you're alone, yeah. right? In, in, um, and you can have good days and bad days. Good days, bad you days. You stare at that computer, you never know what's going to come out. No. And you have to be open to whatever it is. Mm-hmm. If you're not writing honestly, what's the point of writing, right? Right, exactly. And so you write, it's the truth 
can you take it type of thing. Right. And the more you write, the more truth comes out, the more you got to confront it. Yeah. But the better off you are after you do it. Yeah, right. Right. And for me, when I wrote, when I left the NFL, man, I, I dived into the writing thing and I just fucking stayed down there. You did it. I mean, five years of solitude almost is what like <laughs> followed my NFL career. Right. So when I talk to guys, I'm like, fucking pre- be prepared for to be yeah. hard for a couple of years at least, maybe five. Mm-hmm. Like allow yourself this time to go through it and find out who you are. Spend your money if you have to. That's yeah. what it's there for. Yeah. You earned it. You earned it playing. Yeah. Now spend it looking for your new self. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You're not going to be rich forever. That's right. That's How right. many guys leave the NFL and have m- enough money for the rest of their lives? I mean, unless you're Rod Smith. Right. Right. Like, which is. And even he's still fucking selling coffee no, fucking man. on a pyramid scheme. Like, calling you like, <laughs> motherfucker. Like, <laughs> you, know <what> I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you said you were going to buy 10 boxes. Yeah. Right. Right. Oh, man. I didn't so the that. money thing never ends, but like, um, but the writing was super, super helpful for me. Yeah, I bet. And you finished a memoir. Yeah. And you're working on the second one. Uh, yep. The second one being now with my journey in the yoga world. Um, uh, it's a, a rough title. Uh, Namaste, though. <laughs> a former NFL's, NFLers descent into the, the brutal world of teaching yoga. <laughs> So, um, yeah, there's some interesting, and, and so uh, circling back now to taking that first class, it, class, it was so, I walked out feeling so, um, horny, uh, <laughs> of one of the many feelings. Yeah. Right. But so open and, um, and so like a feeling I hadn't felt in a long time of after taking that first yoga class, taking that first yoga class. Yeah. And I'm like, this is the path. This is where I need to go. Um, and so I kept following it. I practiced and practiced and practiced and practiced and practiced. And, um, I eventually said, well, maybe I I enjoy this so much. I'm going to teach it. So, um, I took steps towards that. And, um, during that same time, uh, was the survivor experience. Yeah. So tell tell the, tell the uh, listeners about that. So Grant was a contestant on the show survivor survivor redemption Island. I think it was season 21 or 22. And what year was that? That was 2010, and nice. I had dreadlocks at the time. I watched it, man. Wow. I was at home, like I was in Dreads. Denver, like yeah. t- tuning in, watching. Did you, you really? Like, oh, yeah, I was cheering for you, man. I was so man. surprised, man. I wanted I... you to, you know, I wanted you to win. Of course, I how mean, was it? It didn't go in the end, man. That guy fucked you over. over he told, he told, told you a lie. He, he told didn't. you he had your back, and that motherfucker played the game, but off, he was off well, camera. You, so there are certain yeah, things. You tell the story. Well, look, there are certain things you can do for money that you'll do for money, and certain things <laughs> that you won't do for money, right? And it becomes very clear when you're in an extreme situation as this was um where do i start should i start like do, how so deep do you want to get, get in, into the how'd you how'd you end up on survivor yeah. first okay. of all a friend of mine she had done a couple seasons prior and she's like you know what we were sitting down to lunch one day she's like you'd really dig this experience because i was on this yogic path now i was really calm and centered and they're like they would like your archetype too former nfler now hippie yeah. with dre- i had dreadlocks down to my shoulders um <laughs> never yeah. trust the blonde guy with dreadlocks when dreadlocks right you know what i mean so um and so I sent in a paragraph about here's my story and to uh, one of the heads over at the survivor offices. And I got a response back to me. They're like, come spend a week um, at the Double Tree in Santa Monica. A week? A week. To do what? This is the process. Oh yeah. So, I've heard this. So heard check it out. <laughs> I bypassed all these. They go to city to city to city. And I bypassed all these stand in line for days type things. And I got to bypass all that. And they're just like, we'd like you come in. For a week, and I'm like, fuck yeah, it's a week vacation, dude. I'll take a week off of um, the front desk work. I get three meals a day. I'm staying at the Double Tree. All I have to do is go, like, a few times a day, go to the weight room, go to the pool, go to the I have stations. And so the, the game itself actually starts then. Because there's this idea of like you're gonna make, like you're you're there you're you're on like you you you're, you're coming. You're in the holding tank. You're in the holding tank exactly. And so. Um, for a week I stay there, I go through three interviews, which goes from a tier of like, um, you know, producers and, uh, the, the host, Jeff Probst and everything. I'm going through tiers and tiers of people and interviews saying like, what, all, eight pairs of eyeballs staring at me going, why do you think you should be on Survivor? Tell me, tell us about your story. Right. And so I go, I, I had a line of something to the effect of like, well, a better question is like, how do you go from the NFL to, you know, serving drinks at a strip club in Las Vegas? Boom. And they loved it. Right. Yeah. And they're like, I, you know, Jeff Probst jumps off the couch like, I want to strip I, club. Tell me more, 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 more. <laughs> but Jeff, should is we a, go back Jeff's there a, to do a little research? Yeah, like, <laughs> he's a great guy. So they were interested though. They were really interested and they liked the story. And, you know, after the end of that week, 
you wait two weeks or something and then you get a call and be like, so there may be, you're, we, I, I, we'll have to check back, but chances are good you're on. Hmm. And they were like, what does that mean? And so hmm. then another month goes by and they go, yeah, you're definitely good. Oh, well. So there's this whole process. And so you get the thumbs up. Um, they eventually, they, they send you a contract. It's like, oh, it's so thick, dude. It's like a, a phone book. Oh my God, there's probably so many provisions in there because of the treacherous conditions you're going to be involved in. With language like, to the ends of this universe and beyond. Whoa. Loss of life, limb, whatever. They're not reliable, uh, liable, right? So, What about insurance? Like, do they provide it? Like, if you get hurt, do they pay for the surgery? Uh, Possibly. Do they give you the medicine? They'll they'll probably take care of you. I assumed that, being a corporation as big as they were. Yeah. Um, Throw them in the hole. Throw them in the hole. Yeah. But so to do it, I'm like, fuck it. I'll sign everything. And then my wife, Christina, um, or who was, we had just, oh, that's a whole other story. Um, we had just met two months prior. To this, you going? To me going. Oh, and cool. she was just like, she was she was reading this and going like, are you sure about this? Like, this is, <laughs> I don't want to know. I Because having her sign it meant that all of her work and her image and her th- th- could be liable as well, and she, Why she is that? I don't know, just, they, by, just, just by proxy. So I don't. You guys weren't married yet. We weren't, but uh, there was some language in there that it's like anyone you know may be killed. It. Yeah, <laughs> anyone that knows that you're going, it was re- it was very fear based from the beginning. So you go in oh. like, I don't want to do anything wrong. Right. Let me just get on this and let me just do it. So uh, fast and forward. And the network television machine is a very large, very powerful oh, machine. They have so super much powerful. Money. Is yeah. there? Are you getting paid? No. Nothing. Nothing. It's just for exposure, and if you win, you get something. I did it. My reasoning for doing it was just for the experience. I wanted that NFL-type, push-yourself-to-the-limits type of experience without right. having to actually strap on a helmet and hit somebody yeah, in the dick. Do you know new. what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Um, which, which served you well out there, the ability to do that. Yeah. Right. Because right. I, I watched I watched it, yes. and you just crushed people in the competitions. It was oh, like, well, think just, of it, you guys. It, it was almost like a child playing with, or like a kid, like a professional athlete playing with children. It, and that's what it felt like, because yeah. I knew like this. Think of it. So you have three-day stretches where sun up to sundown, nothing's going on. It's nothing. Nothing's happening. And so you get all this pent-up energy of like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tear somebody's head off like when these, <laughs> when these competitions come up. So I hope it's something really aggressive, right, and something really where you can use your physical Sometimes it would just be like balancing a hand, uh, uh, <laughs> That's even uh, more. balancing a plate on your hand, and you're just like, oh, fuck off, because anybody can do it. Yeah. Um, but the real physical stuff, I got so jacked for it, and it was amazing because that did come out that side of aggression and like, I will, yeah, I will crush you. How was mentality. the? How were the conditions? Like, was it was brutal. it dire? It was brutal. brutal. Well, yeah. Where were you? We were in Nicaragua on the west coast somewhere, and so what happens is you. God, I hope I'm able to say all this, but fuck it. Um, I hey, fly man, it's in. fucking years ago, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I fl- you fly in to the location. No talking. There's no talking. Right from the start when you get to the airport and you take off as a group, no talking. They tell you no talking? No talking or you're out of here. Or you're out of here. You're gone. Oh they have God. replacements. They have many replacements. So there's no and, talking. And would they, was that just lip service or would they actually nope. replace you if you Legit. said, hey, man, how you doing? You Legit. Know? Like yeah, and they and 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 nobody can talk to you. Camera people, Wait, nobody. no talking, no talking. So it's like a mini, like going to a monastery almost, in in the sense that you're you're silent. Um, it's and, a fucking thing. Mm-hmm. It's like an adventure. It's real deal. So it starts, and this is you'd dude, be good on Survivor. Ev. I'd fucking rock it. Yeah, you, you would. should do it. No, fuck. <laughs> dude, I got promo- too much hey, do to it do. to promote the pain project, man. Uh, maybe down the line. I'm okay? gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you. Your first night there, you're gonna be laying uh, in a in a sh- in a shitty homemade shelter, and you're gonna look up, and you're gonna mosquitoes flying around, and you're gonna be cold, and there's gonna be twelve other young people next to you that are screaming and talking about whining, and you're gonna go like, "What the fuck did I sign up for? I can't, <laughs> and I can't go home. I can't. There's no way. You you, they will make you look horrible." Right. If you say I want to get out of here, and they oh, will yeah. do everything they can to keep you there, so it's that's the the incentive to stay. It's so not. there's a lot of manipulation happening by producers off camera. No. So uh, uh, aside from the be quiet, don't talk to each other. Once yeah. you get to the island, you're not talking to the producers at all. Nope. What about when you're giving your testimonials and you're sitting under a tree, like, so, man, that competition today was wild. Right. You know, I truly tried to get. <laughs> Think of it. Think of it, right? And so that's the, one of the few times that you are actually talking. Are they like, Grant, it's your turn. For it's your turn. And so the producer, you'll have a dialogue before and then you'll start. But 
you get off the plane, you land in Nicaragua, blacked out van, you jump into one of those military style where it's, you're facing someone, your knees are knocking together, right? And so you're like this, blacked out. They they put a fucking uh, pillow sack over your head and throw you in there. Essentially, right? It's kind of like that. And again, no talking. If there is talking, right, you're out of here. So they drive you around for two and a half hours. This is a, a, a technique that, uh, that people use for interrogation, right? Like, yeah. Give make you yeah. feel confused as to where you are. So we drive around bumpy roads, bumpy roads. Kick the back doors open. Poof. Monkeys, howler monkeys. You're in the fucking thick of the jungle, Jesus. rainforest, right? Like, that's fucking <laughs> nuts, <laughs> right? And and it's eerily quiet except for the doors closing, and it's like just and and again silence. Fitting for the jungle. Fitting. <laughs> then the camera starts to roll, and um. Backing up. Are you mic'd up? So out they there? just kick you out no. the back of the fucking van. Kick you out of the van. Now a week prior to that, you're getting acclimated. So what that means is you're staying in, in tents, um, outside this giant mansion um, that you'll go have your meals at. But it's still no talking. So seven days you're eating your meals, you're you're reading books, you're whatever. And um, when can you start talking to other people? About. So it's now ten days in. Then, <laughs> so it's it's really a truly so challenging kinda, experience. Like, There's so much I want to tell you. So they want to right? isolate all you. Eye, so it's all eye contact. Ma- imagine walking by somebody twenty times a day and just going like this. How many times can you do this? <laughs> That's wild. <laughs> right. <laughs> so they really get you isolated. Isolated around people. Around people, but no words. And so you really have to go inwards. And so by the time you get dropped off out there, and and they have a, you they don't tell even you all speak the, anymore. Yeah. yeah, which I didn't. I didn't. I. That's how I was able to go as far as I did, is I didn't. Yeah, I imagine the motor mouths don't, like, people don't like yeah. those people. Yeah. No, right away. Like, you just pick, Especially you Especially now, it out. hearing what you said about the silence that preceded it, mm. anybody who starts yapping the whole time, it's like, holy shit, shut up. Yeah, no, that's and weird. it becomes that way yeah. very quickly. Yeah. And here's the interesting thing. It's a, it's, a, it's a Lord of the Flies type situation. You, as a human being, are looking for connection, right? And Mm. you're just searching, 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 searching. And eventually you fall in. People fall in with each other, right? And it's like, okay, I like, I I, I think I like you. Uh, A leader is found. A leader is kind of found, yeah. And then subplots start happening. Um, Interesting. Do you feel like you uh, have to have watched a lot of Survivor to play the game well? No. Or is it an instinct? Instincts. To, wow. to compete and to be friends with people. If to... you are good at um, making friends, if you're easy around people, if it's easy for you to start conversation, great start. It's the it's the people that are, are shy and abrasive, are abrasive or over yeah over the top um, or don't work on building the shelter or fishing. You do sh- yeah you do like stuff that. to be helpful. You gotta be you gotta yeah. everybody does their part right. Everybody does their part, part and it's community. you gotta be a part of the community and it's fake. It becomes real, but then right like, away because it's it because because it is it's like oh we can talk here now and say this is a game, but at a point and when I'm telling you at a point like ten days in when you start hallucinating like. Most everyone does because of lack Why? of food, okay, lack, lack of water. Food, right. um, what What did your usual meals consist of? Yeah, I mean, all right. Well, usual right. meals in the morning, somebody would get the water boiling and throw in enough rice. You guys had rice. We had rice. Unlimited had, rice. No, we had to ration it. So, <laughs> unlimited rice. No, <laughs> uh, Uncle Ben's. Um, <laughs> the, just the small of your hand in the morning, and then the small of your hand at night. And of, rice? of rice, of oh, rice, wow. and that's it. And, and then, then by the end, you're on your own. The rest, own. yeah. If you, but if is you there, catch is there foraging and hunting and get, not hunting, there's crabs. Well, if you can, maybe. there there was a field, a swamp of these massive crabs that had massive pinchers that were big enough that would tear your finger off if you if you caught Got it wrong. wrong. How did yeah. you guys catch them? Well, we made spears, like we made stick, and you would every once in a while you'd stab one, and you. you How many did you catch? We caught quite a few. How many did you catch? Did I catch? Uh, Zero? 15, 20. Oh, wow. So was it a pretty triumphant feeling to fucking spear that thing? It was. It was scary, too. Because and you, you go down back and... like, ah! Yeah. 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 And then you guys rip it Rip shreds. it open, we boil it, and it's like, it's it's there. Dude, this thing was just living two seconds ago, and you caught it, and you're eating it now. And it's really primal, and you feel mm. good about it. And the energy you get in the mouthful of food, it's like, oh, this is good. But by, you know, 30 days, you have, you, your energy is decreasing. I was there 36 oh, days shit. out of 39. 
a long time. Who's and there? The what's the longest person there? Like, Thirty nine. Ooh, wow. 39. 39. That was close. Wow. I thought at one point, I'm like, ah, I got this in the bag. Wow. Really? And yeah, I did. I really did mentally. I like, flipped it on you, huh? Fucking so what happened? How did you, how did that reversal happen? Um, was wait, there some backroom before dealing? We, before we get to that part, right. was there anything in that period that was fucking like something you never expected to happen? Was there something you had to do that really stretched your limits as a, as a human being like that you could never comprehend? Did you eat bugs? Did you shit in the one moment in the basket? No, I can tell. I can count on one hand how many times shit I had in that to basket shit. over there. Because think about it, you don't eat, so you don't shit, wow. and you're. Everyone goes, oh man, did, um, because everyone thinks you still get sexually aroused out there, <laughs> and it's like you're you're, you're not, no, man. your body is in a life and death situation, right, right. so your brain is thinking like survival of the fittest. That's not even a thread of a thought. Right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and you can watch it on TV, and people go like, "Oh yeah, look at they're gonna go hook up in the woods," and it's the ones that do that you have to you wonder what, like, question what's going on in their mind. They might actually be fucking crazy. Do you know <laughs> what I mean? Because in order to have that mentality out there, and this is truth, something has to be wrong upstairs, right? right? Oh. Something missing. Because oh. if you're in that life and death situation, and you're thinking about, "Oh fuck." Yeah, that girl's look at that girl's ass looks hot. And yeah. that biologically, the biologically, things that are important to you are your death. own is your own health, more the t- pumping of your blood to your extremities and other places than your dick. Yeah, right. <laughs> so if your dick fills up with blood, that's a weird thing out there. <laughs> it's strange. Yeah. yeah, it's a strange thing. It's a strange thing. So no sexual feelings. None. How, how did you sleep? Um, horrible. Bug issues. Let me all, ask you this: all, all night, as you as you were there longer, did your blood? kind of change taste for the mosquitoes type of thing like did they stop being interested in you 25 days 26 days um the the bugs mosquitoes uh would stop biting that's pretty um, interesting it's so interesting. you 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 were no longer like the mainland sweet meat to nope. them you, you were, were part of that you were part of the, part of the, of the crew yeah. part of the crew and that's that was cool. so yeah. fascinating um what's that time period grant 25 days 25 days in yeah. yeah in case you're wondering in case you're wondering 25 26 so to the as you mentioned the sleep though um, so here's where it gets interesting, and this is where the hallucinations come in huge, is lack of sleep, lack of food. Um, and that lack of sleep is huge because in order to not get bit by all these bugs, I'm not laying down in, in this shelter. I'm walking to the beach up and down, back and forth, all night, back, forth. Oh, walk, you don't sleep? Walk, 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 back, forth, Why? back, forth. Moving, you don't get bit. Oh, it was about it was about moving enough to get to not get bit, because the feeling of being bit all over was excruciating. Excruciating. It was painful. It was itchy. It was like you could not. You would have itching attacks. And I wonder if there's a way you can prepare for the for the taste of your blood before you something go into to the, eat. Yeah, something you can strip yourself of diet wise. I don't know. It's a good question because it was it Do was some research on that. Yeah, <laughs> but at night I would see things as I was walking down the beach. Like you'd see, I'd see trees bend at ninety degree angles. I'd see people walking towards me that weren't there. Like at one point wow. there was a family, a man and a woman and a little child with a dog dressed in like Victorian style dresses. <laughs> like no shit. And I asked the camera guy. I said, "Do you see that?" Like, in all honesty, do you see that? Like it's walking towards us. Like they are walking towards us as I'm looking at this wall right now or walking towards us and I'm rubbing my eyes and opening them. It's the same. I don't know how it was happening. I don't the wow. brain was misfiring in a way that brought up some fucking Victorian family walking towards me. Well, did they look familiar? No. Right. No. I wish they Maybe did. they lived there. Maybe they did. At one Nicaraguan point. family? <laughs> Maybe. Wander down the, the beach. Victorian dress. <laughs> yeah. Well, they are a little bit behind the times the, the United States, so maybe they it's were possible. Yeah. It's possible. It's um, possible. Yeah. So yeah, you you have that, and and it was all that I wanted and more in an experience. And, so the, and then, these competitions were every three days. Or every so. three days or and, so. And be- the the downtime in between was just fucking sitting around. Nothing. So you talking with everyone or people would talk, but this is the this is the again the the Lord of the Flies mentality. The the human nature is to get together to talk about things um, that you're going to do in the future. Would eat. Right. Um, what am I going to eat when I get home? Uh, what am I going to smoke? What am I going to do this? What am I going to enjoy when I get out of here? Um, 
and then otherwise it was just very like and you get drawn into that and it would be this pining and this whining and this it was a very like not healthy energy to be around so what i would do is just go out three times a day morning midday night sit uh, at the edge of this uh, peak over the ocean and I would sit and just meditate. And luckily I had that oh, yogic background amazing. so I could do that and actually have perspective and life became fucking crystal clear. Is that the first time you really discovered the value of meditation yeah. in your life? Yeah, like to the extreme. Like this was like- a, I rocked the mic like a van. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It became one of those moments of- stripped away from all this yeah. stuff. There's none of it. You can't distract yourself with music. You can't distract yourself with anything. You you are just you. There you are. And now deal with it, whatever comes up. And so that was why they, that's what I went for, that experience of I want to get into the shit of myself, right? Get into the darkest corners and see yeah. what's left and get all, shine light on all this darkness, all this shit that I've carried around for 15 years from the NFL, from my father, from relationships in my life that were shitty and all, all this shit, shine light on it and pff, watch it go away that I didn't need to hold on to it anymore. You know and what you I mean? were able amazing, to have that man. release there? Absolutely. And so amidst all the, these, these long days of doing nothing, mm. these competitions, mm. this eating of rice, uh, the meditating, the hallucinating, yeah. um, the horrible weather conditions, yeah. um, at the end of 36 days, you found yourself going to tribal council, believing that you were safe. Yes. Yeah. So it, describe that scene and how you got eliminated and uh, what preceded it to make you think you weren't going to be. I actually, I, 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 I'd hoped I, I, it wasn't going to go down the path that I thought it was. Um, there was you a, had established yourself as the, I'd the dominant myself. guy. Yeah, and yeah. so now... Alpha male? Yeah. You were the alpha gut dog. For sure. Right. And that's uh, I'm sure that's what Rob, the, the contestant that I befriended, that was his plan the whole time. And having played it three times before, understood the nature of the game. Right. Right? And so... He had played three times Three before. times prior. Okay. Like that's And that's no small feat. Like, no. You were trusting. I was, it was super trusting. But, yeah. he, but here it goes back. Like... When cameras aren't rolling, there's no need to play. This is where this is where I didn't cross. Like cameras aren't rolling, um, and you're you, you're talking with this human being, and you look into each other's eyes and you say, "This is, hey, this is what we're gonna do. Are we good? Yeah, we're good. Like there's no reason. Like it's just, and and he doesn't have to say no. But I and got you had the, that moment. You had that moment of like you because out there it's it was for a me. Lie. It was a lie, but Damn you it. need trust. You fuck. need, but there was a whole thing of, it's mentally fucked. There was a whole thing of, for me, I need something to hold on to to believe because if I don't have it, then then all this doesn't exist, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Um, it, it becomes, uh, there's no moral, there's no moral foundation. There's no um, moral compass for you to guide yourself with. So I, for me personally, and this is a fault, I guess, of the game, I chose to believe that this was the path that I needed to take and this was the guy that we were going to team up with. And when somebody goes off, you want to believe that at some point you have to have a conscience and a soul to be like, well, I'm not going to fuck you over that hard. Well, he was seeing dollar signs. He wanted to win. His ego was so totally involved get it. in it. It was his fourth time doing it. Yeah. To him, it was win or bust. Win or bust, exactly. And you were the biggest threat. Yeah. So so, so, um, so he basically convinced a couple other girls to vote you out? Yeah, to, yeah to vote out. And it was great. I, it was it was perfect timing. I, I had seen enough. I had done enough. I didn't need any more. And by that point, money, I didn't care about the the million dollars or, or anything else that would come as a result of it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You that got was, what you came I for. I got what I came for. It was never to get the million dollars. I was on, yeah. That was not the forefront of why I went. Having that experience was, and I was so crystal clear. Um, you have a chance with this Redemption Island that they started that year of coming back, and we had a challenge where you, you balance on one leg, and then your other leg is holding by like a seesaw lever a, 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 a vase at the end of it, and you <laughs> hold it there, and whoever can hold it longest essentially gets thrown back into the game. Mm. After like an hour of standing there holding holding and holding and holding one person dropped off there were three left and i was one of the three um and i purposely i i made it the hip that i had injured and had zero cartilage in i made that the leg that i was going to hold it was kind of symbolic for my own self to be like after all this 36 days in i'm gonna fucking do the leg that's hurt i'm gonna hold this out and see how long i can hold it out if i make it through i make it through if i don't i don't and then at a certain point at like 56 57 minutes in i go a voice in my head goes you don't need to do anymore like 
fucking drop it. You're good. You got what you came for. And so I just, one little wobble and it fell off. And I was like, that's my experience. That was, oh. And that's all I needed. I didn't need anything else. I didn't want to go back into the game. And, and that, res- awesome. that realization was similar, correct me if I'm wrong, to the one you had in the locker room in Oakland. Yeah, like, I good. Here, yeah, and, recollection. And I could keep going with this, but I'm But done. why? But I'm done. I'm done. Yeah, really good. I never even thought of it like that. So you made it out. You made it out of Nicaragua. You made it back. And you, was there any kind of difficulty in watching all that on, on camera and being separated yeah. from it and watching the Hollywood aspect of it? Yeah, I didn't watch it. You didn't watch I it? I didn't. That's I watched, smart. I, I watched two episodes of it and I said, I've had a, it's enough. It's enough. Because you have to now realize this has been a year interview waiting to see if you go. Um, uh, getting the call that you're going, going to that we- you land the week. And the whole game, la- the whole thing, it's, it's been almost a year now, the whole process. And so... I was done. I was like, I, I don't. And and then do people recognize you? Like, no, that was the beauty of it. Because when I got back, well, cut your the, hair, cut my hair off. There was no more dreads. It was like I had one or two people be like, eh. yeah. um, but the most magical, like the, so I like I said, life became really clear, and the path that I wanted to take and needed to take and was ready to take. Two months prior to leaving for Survivor, I had met Christina, my now wife, and um, we met at the gym that I worked the front desk at. And for years, we saw each other, but for years, we were in other relationships or um, uh, our paths didn't cross when we were available. And so one day they did pass. And when that day I asked her to dinner um, and we went out to dinner a couple of days later and sitting there at dinner with her, I it's I had been told for all those years that I got back from Vegas like you'll know when you because I wanted a family I wanted kids right um I had been told you'll know when you know if you find your person uh and I was, after a while I was just like you know what that's not fucking true and I had to come to the realization myself and this happened no shit this fuck this happened one day it was before our going out on a date with Christina I was I had taken a shower at Equinox. I was sitting out on a balcony overlooking the city and and doing some meditation out there. And I, I just looked out over the city and I said, if I never find this person that I'm wanting in my life and I don't ever have this family that ideally I see in my, my head, that's okay. Because I actually, I love myself enough now that I'm okay being by myself. Does that make sense? Yeah. Fuck yeah. Do you know what I mean? And it was such a powerful to, uh, moment. Well, yeah. And so that night going to dinner, I was like, I don't need to go down this path. You know, I can still go down the path. I'm having, having a great time. I'm enjoying life. But I think, and now looking back hindsight, you as a man, I think you can only you can only get so far in your journey and learn so much about yourself. And I think it takes uh, a, the love and the the vision of a woman or a partner to show you this whole other side to yourself yeah. that you had no fucking clue existed that raises you up to a level where you're like, ah, I didn't even know this was possible. Do you no know doubt. what I mean? And so that like, I get goosebumps thinking about it because I was sitting across the table from her going like the, there you are. This is, and I have a choice and it's not me grasping and holding on to it. You know, mm. like in other relationships where it's like, you're going to fucking fit into this round hole. Mm. You know what I mean? You're square. But so it was it was it was a choice and it was so powerful because it was a choice and it's a choice every day for us now that we're in this relationship right every day we decide we're in this we're parents we're you know this um we're we're partners we're best friends we're lovers you know and this it's a powerful thing when viewed in that versus how i always was in the past you know and so and when you, and you had to go through these this personal transformation to be in a position where you could accept that love in absolutely and i had to and it's as and i know this may sound cheesy right because but it wasn't until that day that i said i'd love myself enough and i never done that before even with all the football and everything i never i don't ever really truly loved myself um and and meant it and believed it and so that's the, that was so powerful and that's why when i got back from nicaragua and the plane landed she was picking me up at the airport i run down the stairs um, I'm looking for her and she comes running through the crowd. I, that's we. I proposed right there at the airport. We've only, <laughs> really? we only known each other awesome. for three months now at this wow. point. Three months, one of those months I was in Nicaragua. <laughs> and uh, and we haven't looked back. 
since. That's amazing. And so when I mean That's clarity, great. like what, what extreme situations will do, much like the football, much like anything that you've been doing for a long period of time that stops abruptly, um, comes clarity yeah. to a degree, right? For you sure. either accept it or you don't. You keep running from it. And I think a lot of guys in our position – will run yeah. and keep fucking running yeah, it's and hard. keep well, running saying, but what you're saying is there's hope there and there's, there's fucking hope, hope to you're find saying, your yes. true self there's hope to figure out what pain means for your life and how to manage it yep. Yep. and to find your true identity and that that has led you to what's actually supposed to happen in your life right right wow. well, i think so, you said a lot of i mean the shining your shining a light on your own shit man and having that that helps all that shit dissolve and right. fade away. Yeah. You know, owning your shit is how you can turn it over to the universe to be dealt with. That's it. Wow. That's it. Fucking great, man. That's it. And well, that Grant, was, yeah, that was it. I think that's a good spot to end. <laughs> let's, good, yeah. let's cap it there, huh? You know, I want to <laughs> thank you, uh, me and Eben, we want to thank you for being our first guest on The Pain Project, for being so open, for well, telling us you. your story. Yeah, man. We're really excited to see where this goes for you. Uh, keep writing, yeah. keep singing, yeah. keep, keep <laughs> downward dogging, yeah. keep meditating, <laughs> and keep in touch with us, man. Absolutely, we will do, and thank you both uh, for creating this safe space. So, Thanks, appreciate Grant. It. Yeah. All right right on. Hey. What's it? Oh yeah, we're gonna plug your we're gonna plug Grant's stuff. You got a right. you want to talk sure, plug yeah. it. Plug social it. media books. Uh, the book it's a memoir. The fifth down. Uh, look for it at thefifthdownbook.com. dot com. Um, Instagram dot com slash Grant Matos. Twitter dot com slash Grant Matos. Um, and I hope you enjoy it. That's M A T T O S. That's right. Thank you. That's right. For <laughs> Evan Britton and Nate Jackson and Jed Bauer over there on the ones and twos. Woo. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Mindful Warrior Podcast, brought to you by Athletes for Care, a health and wellness resource for athletes of all ages. Don't miss out on Nate's book, Slow Getting Up and Fantasy Man. Be sure to check out BringTheHurt.com, a pain advocacy platform dedicated to alternative healing practices. Visit BeTrueOrganics.com for all of your CBD needs. Use promo code BRITTON, all caps 10, for a 10% off discount.